welcome back to love and friends fam how are you all doing thank you so much for tuning in again today so my name is love in case you're seeing me for the first time so from the title of this video i believe you already have an idea of what this video is going to be all about um guys I almost lost my car to fire this is no prank this is me not joking I don't I don't call on something like this when it didn't happen this just happened on Thursday night at about 10 p.m. but before I go into the story I know I'm supposed to be rejoicing right now and everything and dancing but I'm still a little bit in shock God knows from my heart that I am grateful how everything went at the end of the day. I can't thank God enough for his love, his faithfulness, his mercy over my life and my family. I'm still very much in shock. So before I go into this story, let me tell you a little story before this one. So about a week ago, I was on call with my mom. And after a while, and she told me, hey, I forgot to tell you. I actually had a dream about you and I. In that dream, we sort of, you know, we had the same you know uniform or something like that and all of a sudden i saw you crying and i came out asking you why are you crying why are you crying and you said if somebody tore your clothes like my dress or something that i was wearing that somebody tore the, the dress yes ricky my son is knocking hold on guys please sorry guys i'm back my son ricardo is at home today he didn't go to school because the school is closed for today just for today so guys like i was saying he said i was crying in that dream that my somebody tore my dress so and I, I was crying and she said uh she started rejecting it when she woke up and said god forbid whatever it is the enemies are planning to never come to pass and then she said you know mothers i know she didn't want me to get worried and then she said after a while or she slept again and the spirit of god told her it was actually not a bad dream that it's something and uh I don't know, but she just told me it's not a bad dream. She looked for a way to like cover up the whole thing and told me, do not worry, it's not a bad dream. The Holy Spirit told me it's not a bad dream. But I was worried because it's not like you told me I was singing and dancing or I was shedding tears of joy. You told me I was crying in the dream because somebody tore my dress. I don't think anybody would have such a dream and believe it actually means something positive. I'm not Josefina, you know, the dream teller, you know, but... It doesn't sound good to my hearing so i immediately contacted not the same day though a day or two days later i contacted my elder sister she's like when it comes to you know she's a prayer warrior she actually works with a reverend father a priest in lagos like she she's she sees things like she's good she's gifted so i contacted i told my sister look at what mommy said she saw about me this doesn't sound right to me it doesn't sound good to me though she said to her the Holy Spirit told her it's something good, but it doesn't seem good to me. My sister said, God forbid, what kind of dream is that? And then she gave me instructions on how to carry out, you know, prayers and everything, how to reject shame, disgrace, you know, stuff like that. So I agreed, but I didn't do the prayer uh, the day she gave it to me, neither did I do the next day. So it was on Wednesday night, actually, that I had to like, you know, rebuke the spirit of laziness and everything because... It's not like the, the, the spirit is not willing. Sometimes the body, you know, the body is too lazy to like carry out instructions like this. Most especially, you know, you have to do these prayers at midnight. So on Wednesday night, I programmed, um, while I was studying, I programmed my phone to wake me up at about uh, 12.55 so that I could make, you know, I could do my prayer at 1 a.m. So at 1 a.m. my uh, 12.55, my phone rang and I got up and I went to the sitting room I, I had to force myself. I had to, you know, I read the Bible. I thanked God for everything he's done for me so far. I told him both those I remember and those I do not remember. Lord, I am grateful. Then I read Psalm 35. Guys, if you are not yet um, acquainted or how do I put it, familiar with Psalm 35, I implore you to please do so. It's a warfare prayer. I prayed Psalm 35. I prayed so many. I prayed about two to three Psalms last night. And then I went into prayer. I was praying. I was rebuking. I was counseling. I, in fact, I sent back all of their evil packages back to them. I'm not so like, oh my God, I can't believe love prays. I pray. I wish I pray as much as I would have, you know, loved to. But laziness will not allow me. But I prayed. Lo and behold, after praying on Wednesday night, yesterday being Thursday. Obviously, you guys might see this video on a Saturday. So, 
on a Thursday night, I went and picked up my kids from school. We came back and I parked outside because you sometimes in the garage there are no parking space left. And outside, um, usually, you know, I still you still have one or two parking parking space. So I parked outside. There was just a car parked in front of me and I parked behind that car and I left it there. And this is not the first time. Like over the years that we've been living here, I've been parking my car outside and nothing has ever happened. Now it's lo and behold, behold at about 10 p.m. the same night, somebody was honing outside, somebody was hitting on the clock saying like, boo, 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 and like, I was already on bed with my husband, I was studying though, and I was like, who is doing this? I kept quiet, but the person kept on insisting on the clock saying like they honing, I don't, for those who don't know what clock saying is like horn, Keep hitting on the horn like i said no this is like this is not too much do during the um during the summer period you know young children and the teenagers and everything the 17 18 you know they make lots of noise with their motorbikes with their cars and everything but I, like this one is too much like this person keeps insisting on this so my husband got up i got up immediately i dropped my computer i opened up the window you know, my husband was opening, you know, where you draw whatever for the window to open and I was opening the glass and I looked outside and I saw smoke, like heavy smokes were coming up. Guys, I'm, I might attach a clip here and there of, uh, you know, the scene last night. So I saw smoke. I said, Jesus, what is happening? So we ran out from the room and came to the sitting room, opened our sitting room and went to the veranda, you know, and then I saw a car on fire the car was burning immediately my brain made calculation i said jesus that is my car jesus that is my car my husband said no 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 no. yours is the one behind yours is the one immediately behind and like what are you saying i parked right there like at that particular moment my brain was telling me that that was where i parked that that was my car that was on fire but my husband was able to like my husband said no that is not yours yours is the one behind but i couldn't tell anymore because it was late at night and the fire and the smoke that was coming out from the car would not allow me to see the color of the car to know if it was mine or not then later i was able to like understand that yes mine was the one behind but immediately my, like, my mind was oh my god from that one is going to like if that fire isn't controlled immediately it might extend to mine because mine is the one immediately behind <sighs> oh Jesus see the way you love me see the way you care for me you carry my matter for your head though in a male being a son like a little baby you wash over me oh you know they carry me the play oh, in a male being a song oh jesus guys forget my voice for forgive my voice i i have cold guys <laughs> i don't know i don't know what would have happened but immediately i told my husband please 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 Go and see if you can move the car. Like <laughs> telling somebody to go and move a car that is far behind the one that was on fire, guys. I don't know, but my husband really put on his shoes, took my car keys, went downstairs, you know. But he couldn't get close. Already neighbors were out. Some people were trying to bring the fire extinguisher. Some people were bringing, you know, bowls with water, and they were pouring to like, you know. Somehow my husband happened to like, you know, move behind, get into the car. While those people were walking on putting that particular one off, my husband immediately entered into mine and then somehow brought mine out and then moved it away from, you know, that particular one. This, this whole thing made me so emotional because this car... It's actually the only car we have right now in the family. My husband's car has been having problems, like series of problems. And the man just made up his mind. He said, okay, let me sell off this car before this car finally, you know, stops moving. So my husband sent that car away and sold it off. And he's trying, he's still trying to like get, you know, maybe a second hand car that he can be using. Because in a family, <laughs> in a family, 
two cars are needed though if you have one it's not a problem or two are needed because when husband goes to work and the wife and the mother has to be at home to take care of children or run school runs and everything you will now discover that two cars are actually needed in a family obviously there are people that are still managing with just one car at home but it's something we're not used to you know before my husband met me i already had my own car you know and then when we got married and after i had um, my first son my husband bought me this particular car right now that i'm talking about so the car is still very very much new so i i'm speechless guys so it ended well later uh, we were able to call the fire brigade that came and they helped put off you know do the final work by putting up the fire and everything so guys why am i saying this if you call yourself a believer you call yourself a child of god and you don't pray you don't know how much power you're putting into the hands of the enemies or into the hands of the devil if you call yourself a child of god and you don't take dreams seriously you need to wake up because god reveals to redeem like when things are about to happen or things are about to take place somehow somehow god reveals it it might not be through just you it might be through your a friend it might be through a relative it might be through your mom but god reveals these things the same thing happened to me as about two weeks ago i dreamt that I, a bad news was brought to me that somebody died and when i brought it to my family group um you know on whatsapp and i told them look at what i saw in my dream and lo and behold my sister two of my sisters also confirmed they had similar dreams look ah, god at the end of the day the spirit of death was hovering around my family but thank god somebody else went down somebody else went down because the same person that gifted my father something to drink and my father ended up my family ended up throwing away that drink the same person in less than a month the person died I am saying this, I am repeating it again. Do not take your dreams lightly. Dreams are important. Dreams are extremely important. And when instructions are given to you on how to pray or whatever, take it seriously. You don't need a pastor to pray for things to happen in your life or for God to take away whatever. You don't need it. You on your own, you can communicate directly to your God. You are his child. You guys have a bond. Only if you understand that you guys have a bond. Do not take your dreams for granted and do not take instruction for prayers for granted. You might be saving somebody's life. You might be saving your own life or might be saving a family or friend or friend's life. So it's so much an emotional video for me, but I'm going to end it all right here. So I just want somebody to learn one or two things from this, from this story and be appreciative to God, you know, for everything he's done for you so far and where he has brought you where he's taking you and everything today being my today being friday and the 14th of may is actually my my marriage anniversary five years that i'm married to my husband so what happened on thursday if it had actually ended up ruining my car i would have been celebrating five years of my marriage in tears in tears remember in the dream, my mom saw me crying as somebody told my address. The things of this world, the mystery of this world. You might not believe it, but I do believe it 100%. That that tears my mother saw me cry, that tears my mother saw me shed in that dream was me crying over my car. But thank God it didn't come to pass. Thank you so much guys for watching and if you're new you here you've not subscribed to this channel please do subscribe join our family please like this video because i notice people don't not like videos like this video and share if you can thank you so much for watching to come your way next time you all are loved and appreciated